folks, thank you very much for joining me. This is the final video of the Mephitic Bite Hauler um, playlist. Um, we're about to get him finished off, so uh, let's have a look at the paints that I'm going to need, alright? So there's the model. So what we're going to need is we're going to use some sterling mud. That's going to give us the texture on the base. We're going to use uh, some uh, Avedon Black. That's pretty much the only standard paint we're going to be using. We're going to use the dry paint Tyrant Skull. Um, and there's a couple of technical paints we're going to be using today. There's Nurgle's Rot and Blood for the Blood God. We're going to use a handful of shades. First of all, a Reichland Flesh Shade. We're going to use a Dragon Off Nightshade, Cassandori Yellow, Caribou Crimson, and I'm actually using a Tamaya paint this time, it's XF85, is their rubber black. So, those are the paints that I'm going to be using in this video. Uh, however, the way that this video is going to work is it's pretty much just a pick and choose what you want to do. We pretty much finished the model last week with the exception of the basing. Um, so, uh, and the basing is pretty much dealer's choice really. You get to choose whether what kind of basing you want to do. I'm just using a kind of a muddy tech toxic thing. Uh, we're gonna be adding some, you know, some slight weathering and so on. So you know, you can pick and choose how much of that you want to use. And the Tamaya paint I'm going to use is basically just for the rim of the base, and that pretty much again is you can choose whatever color you want. All right, so use this video to just kind of just pick and choose what you want to use out of it. You know, there's no real rhyme or reason to needing to do any of this stuff. Um, so I hope you enjoy this one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't and at the end of the video just hang around and you get to see a nice little you know, thing of the model just spinning around. Anyway, let's get on with the model. Alrighty then, so there's going to be a bit of a dodgy cut at the end of this bit but the very first thing I want to do is grab the old uh, texture. I want to use some sterling mud and uh, just throw that on the base, give this a shake. I'm going to be using the Citadel um, spreader thing, texture spreading tool. Um, it's not a necessity to use this, you can use a paintbrush. Um, but with the texture paints, you, know, you don't want to be using your best brushes for a start uh, because you know, it's difficult to uh, keep it out of the ferrule with your brushes. Um, you need quite a bit of this stuff to spread it around the entirety of this base. I would, uh, I would suggest using the spreader. So basically all I want to do is I'm just putting a load of it on to the base. Oh, it seems to have dried in the lid here. Just seeing if I can get some of that out. Right, okay, so I've got a lump on there. So using the wide end and I'm just spreading it around the base. Get spread around, and I don't mind getting this onto the model um, because it's mud. So yeah, if it spreads onto the model, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and in fact, I probably will actually spread some of this over the tracks themselves anyway. But anyway, let's just spread this around.
so when you're done, don't forget to uh, clean off the uh, clean off the tool. Grab some water and a bit of kitchen water just to clean off the uh, any plastic. So as long as you get onto it before it dries, it should be alright. Now you may have you may have seen. I mean, I know it's sped up, but you may have seen it's quite lumpy. I seem to have less in here than I was expecting to have in here. I do want to get some uh, some of this uh, mud up the tracks, so I'm going to switch to a brush now. And I'm still going to use this is an old brush. Don't use any brush that you actually want to look after. All right? Um, you can clean your brush after this. It's not like it's going to you know it's not going to instantly damage your brush, but you know this stuff it's not regular paint, so you know, just bear that in mind. So I've got mud all over the base now, and that will dry up nicely. And then all I have now is a very fat brush. I've got some of this stuff on the brush. And I just want to jab it into the tracks. All over the tracks. Don't worry about getting onto the base as well. Add some texture to that as well. And we're just going to start grabbing some of this stuff. Yeah, we do need to have some of the uh, metallics still showing. So we're not covering the entire thing. But, you know, we're just going to throw some mud over the bottom part of this one on the, on the neck here as well just a little bit of mud there just to show that these things don't really care where they're going even up on the side of there they're up there, up there a bit up on the railings up on the side there and what I was saying about an odd cut once I've done this bit here, I now actually need to use this, put this to one side and leave it to dry for overnight really. So, unlike normal where I'd put that here and try and cut it so that you just uh, it just looks dry when it's done, I'm going to have to move that out of the way now overnight to dry. So, but with the magic of uh, YouTube, You'll see me in just a couple of seconds. Alrighty then, so it's a little bit of a different cut than I would normally do because I needed to wait for this to dry. It's a little bit flatter than normal, there's still a mud here, but we've got some nice texture going on there. I think I'd like to put some more divots in there and make the uh, effect a little bit more uneven. But it's good enough for me and we can see that it's uh, We've got some bits that are built up around the wheels, around there, and so on, up underneath there. And it just generally looks untidy, which is good. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so we're going to move on to Tyrant Skull, and we're going to dry brush this. And since I got it in the Conquest magazine, I will try the Citadel dry brush, rather than my usual one, so we'll see how this works. But, there's nothing different. Then what I would normally do, I add to the brush, I then work that in to the bristles and really get that all worked in there, <coughs> like that, there we are, so that's what I'm looking for there and I'm just going to give it a quick dry brush all over this base. There we go, and I'm happy with that. There we go, so that's that. And you may have noticed I did catch on top of the uh, model as well, where we added the stellar mud all over the rest of the model. Now, I'm not finished with the base just yet. We will come back to that later. Um, but this episode is about adding extra details. So, if you're happy with the model itself, you can come back to do the bit on the base that I'm going to do if you want to do that when I get around to doing it. You can kind of pick and choose which parts of this video you want to do. Alright, so I'm happy with the base so far. Uh, that's You could leave that as it is. So what I'm going to move on to now is I'm going to add some more details to the rest of the model. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring in some of the Blood for the Blood God technical paint. You'll notice that we're going to be using a lot of technical paints during this video. And so what I'm going to do with this is grabbing hold of 
this here. I'm going to add a little lump of that to a brush here. I'm not using the best brushes, I'm going back to my old Cotman brushes here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of this blood into some of these uh, cracks. Now obviously these are Nurgle models, so you know they're kind of um, tainted uh, by Nurgle and demons are coming in possessing the machines and so on. And so there's lots of these parts of these models that are you know biological. So I'm just coming along some of these cracks and stuff rather than trying to paint in flesh and so on. I'm just going to add in this blood. So, try not to do it too thick. Just add on some of this blood, streak it down a little bit. And we'll have it a bit like that. So I'm happy with, uh, with adding those bits and pieces there. And again, I'm not quite finished with the blood, but we do need to leave it to dry. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to add some details to this flamer thing going on here. This uh, We're going to add some heat bloom to that. Now what we're going to do is the very first thing that I'm going to do is come in with a right clean flesh shade. Now this will, if you want to do heat bloom, there are many, many ways of doing it. This is just the easiest way I found of doing it. And so, what we'll do is we'll grab hold of a different brush. Uh, that. And so, what this is going to do is we've already finished painting this here, so we're happy with the way that that has been painted. So, what we're going to do is we're just adding color to this, and so along. Um, most of the way across the uh, across the model, across the muzzle, almost all the way. Uh, you could go all the way if you want. We're just going to add this right hand flesh shade across the entire surface, all the way forward. So you go almost all the way back, and make sure you come all the way forward, covering everything front of where you started. Now you don't have to make a nice clean line, in fact having a clean line is not what you're looking for across the back here. So you know don't be careful with how far back you're taking it. Sometimes you're going all the way back, sometimes you're not going quite as far back as you wanted to. It's kind of you know just don't be careful with it. Alright. There we go. So we need to leave that to dry now. What we can do is while we're here, so we can add some streaking effects. I know I just closed the pot, but I'll bring it back. I'll open it back up again. And this is going to be a case of what we want to do. Some of these divots we're going to fill with some wash, uh, almost overfill it, and then just run it down in a kind of a triangle, and then just drag it down. All right, and if you get to the bottom, just pull it down the bottom there, and then you could run it back down again after that. Okay, so I'll do that around some of these divots. a lot of those divots done. So what I want to do now, yeah we're going to hop around the model here and stuff while we're waiting for things to dry and come in with Nurgle's Rot Technical Paint. Now what we want to do with this, we're going to come back to the base here and we're going to just put some of the pools of this stuff on here. We're going to come back in with this nasty brush that we were using the uh, basing material with okay. it's quite a big base you might want to use a small brush if you're doing this with a small uh, model but some of the areas where it looks like liquid could pour we're just going to add this onto it and 
can be a bit generous with this, you can be a bit uh, and leave it a bit thick, spread it out a bit thinner. Just in general, I'm just going to add some of this, we're just going to pull this toxic stuff, toxic looking stuff down underneath that model. Right, so some of it's thin, some of it's thick. I'm just going to pull it on there, like this. There are ways that you could do this that would uh, give you a much more realistic look, a realistic finish. You could undercoat it with a darker green first. Um, we could be a bit more careful with it to add a more realistic effect to the uh, sludge here. That's not really what we're looking for right now. I'm just looking for a, a decent result for as little effort as possible, really. That's the whole point of these videos. We're not, we're not looking for hyper realism. We're looking for a decent result. There we are. So we're just going to sludge that down there, like that. Okay, and while we've got the nodes right, this is why we're jumping around the model a little bit. While we've got that out, I'm going to turn it back to our smaller brush that we did for the, uh, the blood for the blood god. And we're going to come back in with some nodes right on this brush. And on some of the larger areas with the blood, I'll we'll just put a little bit of this in there as well. Mix in a little bit of you know, gunk and pus or whatever it is you want to think about it. A really disgusting kind of, you know, rotten kind of feel to it. So not only is this thing bleeding, it's also rotten as well. So I'll add a little bit of this around the bottom. And then what you could do as well is in some of the areas that had a crack but you didn't put any blood in it. Few spots, you know, be crazy. Alright, let's go around the rest of the model as well. Add in a new seat for you. There we are. Right, I'm happy with that in a minute. Right, so what we need to do is we're still waiting for the uh, Rikel and Flesh Shade to dry on uh, the uh, muzzle here. So when that's dry, we're now ready to put the final touches on this but before we do that there is one final thing I wish to do and that's not in the camera um, this is a purely um, aesthetic thing and you can do whatever color you like I like using uh, rubber black XF85 it's a purely cosmetic thing and it generally just depends on what you want to do. A lot of my kill team board, the kill team models, I use orange. But what I want to do is I'm going to get some of this on the brush. I just want to tidy up the edge here. Just around the edge of the model. I'm just going to go around using this here. Just while we're waiting for the wash to dry on the muzzle. Right, we might need to come back over and do a bit more of this. Gotcha. See, once the paint has half dry and you try and paint over it again, you can end up ripping the paint off. Try not to do that, like I'm still doing now. But uh, I might need to do an OK on that, but we'll see what that looks like when it's done. But for now, we're just going to wait for the uh, wash to dry on the end of the barrel here. So I will be back in just a minute. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with Cassador and Yellow now. Uh, we're going to have to keep stopping and starting this bit because this is the final stage of this model. Mm -hmm. way this is gone. But Cassador and Yellow. So we went almost all the way, so now we're just going to come back a bit and just do most of the barrel. Not quite as far as we went the first time, 
but again we're still being rough with it, we don't want a perfect uh, transition between the uh, flesh shade and the yellow. I'm just painting everything above it. Keep it nice and thin still. And I'm going to start blobbing paint on even though you're being rough with it. Alright. And then, unfortunately, we then have to wait a bit. Alright, so we just add that yellow on the end there. And now we wait. You know what? I tell a lie. I said this was the final step, but it's not quite. So, let me just grab a world palette. Because I do the silly thing and put everything into drop of balls, or I tried to at one point. But I've got this Nahila Nahilak Oxide, yeah I don't know how to say it either. Um, this is going to be for the um, the brass. Completely forgot about this, so I'm going to just drop a couple of drops in here. While I'm still waiting for the Kelsey and Roy to dry on there. Put a couple of drops of this stuff in a well palette. Now obviously if you've got it in a pot, you can just take it straight from the pot like I did with the Blood for the Blood God. And what I want to do with this, I'm going to get a reasonably small brush because you don't want to overdo this. And over the brass sections, we're just going to pop a little bit in here. In some of the deepest recesses, I'm just going to add a little bit of this oxide as well as in some of these corners here. Basically where you think lots of stuff would eventually accumulate. Uh, lots of water to to, uh, to like, um, weather away at the oxide or at the brass. Gonna add a few drops of this in there as well around some of these, and you could run it down a little bit as well, like uh, like we did with the uh, flesh shade in the um, in the divots. You could uh, do this and then just run it down just a little bit, but not too much. We could add, if we grab, so like on this here, make sure you can see it, uh, add a little bit in here and then run it down so it starts to drip. Okay, so you could do that as well. Alright, so we're just going to go around adding some of this. Try not to be symmetrical with it. So up here we've got somewhere where it's lots could go uh, along this ridge here. Lots of it could, uh, lots of water could accumulate and oxidise the uh, the brass. But don't try, try not to be symmetrical. So I'm going to go along this side. I'm going to go along the front here. Okay, just add some of that. But I'm not going to do the same thing on the other side. On the other side, I'm going to come in and I'll kind of go towards the back like that and so it's not completely symmetrical yeah and so it doesn't look like it's obviously uh, obviously done again after time you could start building up uh, a confidence and a repertoire of being able to build up um, various stages of oxide uh, this stuff is uh, almost like a perfect color match to the Statue of Liberty is almost like yeah, 100% copper oxide all over the thing. Even though yeah, this is brass and not copper, but you know, yeah, we're not going for realism here. But the point is, yeah, I mean, the Statue of Liberty is pretty much all this colour. The only difference is some shadowing. Um, but what you could do is you could build up uh, layers of, of this stuff um, and building it up so you've got you know this stuff which is really really bright copper oxide. But you could thin down. Um, if I could grab some of it off the top of my head, uh, which colour is it? Ah, there we go. Sotec green. And you could uh, thin this down to the point of the same level as um, uh, this oxide stuff. It's a really, really thin, thin, thin paint. Uh, and you could put that on first and then put this on over the top to layer up the colours, but uh, yeah, for now, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm keeping it nice and simple. Just something you could do, just to build up the, uh, the colours. Yeah. 
Okay, so now that I've done that, uh, this is pretty much dry. I mean, you can see that it's not 100% dry, there is still a little bit of glossiness to it. Um, but that's not going to be a huge issue, so what we're going to do with that, we're going to get rid of this out of the way, we're going to get rid of that out of the way, bring in the other brush, and now I'm going to come in with Carabao Crimson. <coughs> and that is then going to be on the end of the brush. And we've been sort of three quarters of the way, so the, the red is going to come up you know, about halfway now. We're still you know, reducing the amount that we're putting this colour on bit by bit as we go along. As a matter of the uh, yellow is just a little bit wet still. You don't want it completely wet, you don't want to be putting it straight on to wet wash. But because it's slightly damp, it kind of blends a little bit. It mixes with the yellow, it turns a bit orange in some of those areas where it mixes. But that's wet, but we're going to leave that there now and leave that to dry. Alright, now I'm jumping a few steps here because uh, it's not a very big one. Uh, in the future, when we've got a larger one, uh, we'll do more steps than this. But for now, we're going to come in with a Dragon Off Nightshade. And again, we're going to do the same thing. A little bit further along than what we have done in the previous steps. So this one is pretty much just down here now. So we're going to come along here. And that. Here, like I said, not being gentle, sometimes we're going over the whole thing, sometimes uh, we're not quite as far as we might think we want to go. And we there, and once again, we get to dry. Okay, then, finally, what we're going to do now, that's all dry there, is uh, just going to grab some black here, and grab the old dry brush again. Very gently, just black in the brush. Don't need a lot at all. Just like that. Wipe that off. There we are. Just grab a little bit of black on the dry brush. And just go along the end. There. Like that. Just to add a little bit of soot. I think that's pretty much that finished. Alright, so we'll have a proper look at that. Wait until the end of the video there, and we'll have a proper look at that um, at the end. Um, what's going on here? What happened if I use the right camera? There we go. Oh no, what happened there? Alright, uh, this is all the whole editing while I'm working sort of thing so uh, yeah I'll have to get used to that anyway so yeah thank you for watching this one I hope you enjoyed it um, that's uh, the end of the uh, Mophitic Blight or my playlist and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, this can be transferred onto pretty much any Death Guard model uh, including infantry you know the colors themselves you know the armor the skin the boils you know it pretty much transfers across the whole thing um, but, you know, there will be some videos coming about that in the future. So I hope you uh, tune in for those. Don't forget, if you haven't already, to subscribe to the channel and click the bell button next to it so that you don't miss any of my uploads. Other than that, you can check out all the links below for all of my social media and all that sort of jazz. And you can support the channel down there as well. But have a look at those at your leisure. And I'll say thank you for watching this one. And I'll catch you in the next one. All right? Done.